Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Nolan or the Optimistic Gamer here and welcome back to the Optimistic Survival Series. Today we have two items on our agenda, but before I get into that, I just want to admit that I have not even done any work with this world open since the last episode. I know I said I would start working on a path to the village, to the experience farm, but I have not made any progress in that regard. I haven't even gone out and gotten the resources for that yet, but that's going to take some time. I will just kind of work on that over the course of the next few weeks. For today, I would like to start off by getting a few more horses, even if it's just one or two. I just want to get some more because while I do love the optimistic namer, I think that there is a faster horse that we could potentially find and we can definitely breed our horses and get an even faster horse, which would be great for all of the exploring that I would like to do and just quick traveling, you know, getting over to that XP farm or to the village. It's always nice to have a really quick horse. Of course, we don't have Elytra yet. That is coming later on, but that's going to require us to travel to the end first. So we will just stick with this. I'm going to, well, I should probably do this from outside of the horse pen. I'm going to need that saddle. We will leave the armor on him for now. And we are just going to set out. There's horses all across the valley and it would actually be kind of nice if we got most or all of them and just kind of figured out which ones were the fastest versus the slowest. We'll start with this guy right down here. Might take a few attempts for us. He has better health. Uh, 12. Yeah, 12 hearts. And I don't know why he is he trying to buck me off into that hole there, that would not be very nice of him. There we go, alright. We'll throw the saddle on him and uh, see how his speed is. Okay, he is not very fast at all. Let's test his jump right here at the tree farm. <laughs> not great jumping either. So, this one will definitely not be a riding horse, but we will take him back anyway. There we go, and saddle on him. He's pretty quick. Let's see how the jump is. Ooh, he can jump pretty high too. At least three blocks, maybe three and a half. Not 100% sure, we'll have to test that. And maybe we can build ourselves a little horse track and do some time trials, see which horse is really the fastest. Of course, there are mods that will tell you that, but I'm keeping the survival completely vanilla. Alright, saddle on him, and he's pretty quick. Amazing health, though. Look at that. That's 15 hearts. And uh, let's test the jump here. Okay, maybe two and a half blocks, but he couldn't quite clear that three block jump. Not bad, though. It's hard to tell who's fastest, honestly. So maybe we will have to set up a time trial course for them. All right, we'll get maybe one or two more horses here. And you know what? I suppose since there's one over here, we might as well take a donkey with us. We can put chests on the sides. And that's a fun sound, isn't it? We can put chests on the sides of him and do some long distance traveling with a lot of materials if we need to. And we are quickly outgrowing our horse pasture here, we are definitely going to need some stables in the near future. His jump isn't horrible and his health is pretty good. We'll take him back, of course. But I think the optimistic namer will still remain as our primary horse for now. Look at him all majestic in his diamond armor. Alright, we'll take that saddle, we'll put it back on him. That's all I wanted to do for horses right now. But the other thing I would like to accomplish today is head back into the nether, where I know we've spent a little bit of time in the past few episodes 
and I want to actually start a nether hub. So we can do some traveling to the desert or to the swamp, for example, if I can ever find that swamp again. And have that so we have easy access to all biomes around us and a quick way to travel between them. So for that, I am going to need quite a bit of obsidian, and I also need to figure out what pallet I want to build it with. Obviously, we are going to stay away from wood. I'm thinking a deep slate pallet and maybe some crimson wood. So that is going to require us to head in to the crimson forest right through the nether portal and get some of that. And I just realized I'm not wearing any gold, so we're going to want to keep our distance from those piglins over there. But I'm just going to get some of this wood. Alright, so I collected just over a stack of crimson wood, crimson stems. We can turn that into the crimson planks here. And we will be able to... I'm going to put the cobbled deep slate through a stone cutter. We'll do something like polished deep slate or tiles or something like that. And we're just going to have a nice closed off hallway. Obviously, we will have an exit out in places like this where we need to access the nether itself. But we will just kind of work our way with tunnels and paths through the nether. Who knows? Maybe we will run into a bastion or another nether fortress, find some cool adventures along the way. But we need to first go back into the overworld and decide where we want our portals to end up. Because right now, I'd just be digging in random directions, not having any clue where the final destination would be. So I'm going to grab a bucket of water and we will head on down, not too far, to our lava pool that we have right down here along our staircase. I think this is where I mined some obsidian before. <laughs> yep, there's still water here. And we will put some water right down in there and get to work getting some more obsidian. I'm gonna maybe say that we will start with four portals. So we will need 40 obsidian. So I think I'm gonna be hard at work for a little while. Well, that took me quite a bit of time, but I have secured our 40 obsidian that we will need for those four nether portals. And now we get to go out and do some exploring in the overworld. We're just going to run from all these mobs out here, although we'll go ahead and kill the spider so that I can sleep. So we'll get to do some exploring in the overworld, deciding where we want to set up our nether portals. And I'm going to, well, I already have flint and steel. I'm just going to get rid of those spider droppings there and then clean up a couple other items here in my inventory. Turn that into planks here. And I'm going to take our archaeology brush just in case we come across some suspicious looking blocks. I'm also going to take a boat, not a chest boat, just a normal boat, and we will be on our way. I think we will start north because I don't normally explore too far in this direction, or at least haven't yet. All right, so we need to be careful for powdered snow as we walk through here. I see some right up there, but I don't see any in front of us, so I think we are okay. And it looks like we have some ocean over in this direction. And who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and find a swamp right away, but we are going to hop in our boat and see what this ocean has to offer. Well, I already see a shipwreck right here. I know we can't get too distracted today because we have a lot that we have to do with our nether hub, but it's always worth checking a shipwreck for things like buried treasure maps. Not bad, not bad. We will definitely take those iron ingots with us. We'll grab the gold as well. 
the heart of the sea why not i think we can leave the rest of these items for now well that has redirected us into a sunflower plains biome so we will see where this takes us and I do want to be mindful of traveling too far in any certain direction because that will make it very difficult for us when it comes to making that nether hub. So I think I think what I'm going to do is go on to chunk base and put in our seed and we will just kind of find those biomes like the desert and the swamp and go from there. Okay, I have found a very, very large swamp on Chunk Base through the seed map. So that is where we are going to head. And honestly, part of me is wondering if this is the swamp that I came to. Because I do remember there being a spruce forest nearby. And... I don't see any other swamps on the map, so I could only assume that this is the one that I've been to. So we will get in here. We'll kind of go kind of into the heart of it. I'm not going to put the portal out on the edge. We'll set it up right in the middle, and who knows, maybe we will find a witch hut. And of course it's raining, so I'm not sure what the moon cycle is, but we will get in here and see if there are any slimes. And I do see one bouncing about over here. Let's go in and finally get what we rightfully deserve. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, so in the swamp now, like I said, it is a very, very large biome. So we are just going to work towards what I would just assume to be the middle Man, it, I, I can't pass these up. I mean, <laughs> there's too many of them. Maybe it's a full moon. Who knows? Well, I'm now at almost a stack and a quarter of slime, so I don't think we have any shortage of that. That being said, let's get focused again, and I think right over here is where we can set up the portal. I just want to pick a spot where there's not too many mobs and we don't get shot at or blown up or attacked. All right, I'm thinking about right here. All right, we'll have to attack them, but we got the portal lit, and let's head on through, see where we are at. And Basalt Delta, of course, right after I gave that whole lecture about escaping it, and here we are in a beautiful <laughs> Basalt Delta. All right. So I'm going to take the coordinates of this nether portal and, well, actually I think we may just be able to start tunneling back from here. I'm going to head down here and see if I can get a better view of where we are at. Maybe there's a unique landmark or how about a bastion remnant. Okay, so the coordinates of our home nether portal are... 152 and negative 50 so if we go this way like 24 blocks then it will just be traveling in this direction for about 350 blocks so i think we will just start by heading up this way and then we can work our way over later on i'm trying to think of the best way to go about this for now well we'll need the pickaxe for sure and I'm going to get rid of some of this other useless junk. And I think we can just kind of work our way in this direction. And we'll just be very careful as we dig through the walls. For now, I'm just going to dig out a path. And then we will come back and add the actual aesthetic of the pathway, the nether hub that we are starting to build. Well, I'm getting really close. Luckily for us, it has been primarily nether rack. We've just been in the nether wastes. So no digging through stone. It's just been instant mine. And it looks like this is our crimson forest. We are about 40 blocks away. Uh-oh. 
about 40 blocks away from the portal, and now I think I can see it right up there, a hint of obsidian. So we need to work our way up and over, and we will just do that right here, being very mindful of that large stream of lava below us. And there we go, there's our portal, and the path to the swamp is just right here, a few turns, we head down a little bit, and it is just a straight shot all the way to the end. I think we can even see it a little bit, I don't know, I could be wrong, but we can get there very quickly now, all the way to the swamp, it's only about 300 blocks of a walk versus a 2400 block walk from the overworld. So that's our first point. Let's head to the desert. Well, it's definitely going to be very nice to have this nether portal because that is a very long journey to the desert from our house. Unlike the swamp, though, I'm not going in the middle of the desert. I'm going to kind of straddle it between the badlands and the desert so that we have quick access to terracotta and red sand. So we'll go ahead and build the nether portal real quick as the sun is going down. And just as before, we will just connect up our portal with the one at home. And it looks like we are at the bottom of a small cavern here with no exit. So we are going to have to dig our way out and we once again are heading to 150. So we will be going in this direction and negative 50. So we will be heading southwest. All right, I've found my way out. It looks like we have a soul sand valley biome over in this direction and I can't say for certain that, uh oh, I can't say for certain that we have been to that biome before. I don't recall getting the... Oh, Hot Destinations, I think, is the advancement for visiting every biome in the nether. I suppose we are about to find out. And I'm just going to keep this path elevated. Uh-oh, it looks like we actually went... Oh, no, we're doing fine. Like I said, I'm keeping this path elevated so I can easily identify it. All right, let's step into the Soul Sand Valley and see what we get. There we go. Another advancement for our record books. I'll take it. And this is a very densely populated place right in here. We're just going to keep moving forward with our path here. And it looks like negative 50 is right here, so we are just going to be heading in this direction. But we want to get up to 95, so let me grab some more netherrack to build with. And, just out of curiosity, I'm going to duck over this hill right here, see if there's anything of interest. Not that I can see right away. We will definitely have to pay a visit to that bastion that we saw coming through the swamp portal. That will... Definitely be a future project for us. Alright, so I finished our staircase up. I was just grabbing some more netherrack, and now it is just digging in a straight line until we reach our portal. Alright, I see our portal straight ahead. We are blocked by that lava, though. I think it's about time we get up there and closed that source. Uh-oh, alright, we've got piglins with bows and angry hoglins down there we have some work to do all right so the bridge is complete again basically just a straight line all the way to that portal and now we have that straight line going in that direction so we're kind of branching out now now we got to get up here and close off this lava source so that well, it's a little safer for us, and we can actually build our hub with ease of mind. There we go. All right, so that should cut off that flow, and then it should open up. It will be a little bit darker. It's going to look more like that, I have a feeling, but at least we'll be able to get through. 
And there we go. Actually, not as dark as I thought. I guess there are a lot of shroom lights around. That is definitely helping. Okay, so we have desert in this direction, swamp in that direction. Honestly, those are the primary biomes that I wanted to link. So I'm just going to clean out my inventory a little bit, and then we'll get right back in there and figure out a design for the hallway. We'll go ahead and take the stone cutter with us. We will definitely need that for all of that deep slate. We have the crimson planks with us, and we should be good to start mapping this out now. I have a few ideas in mind, so we will see how this all turns out for us. I'm just going to put the stone cutter down right here, and, you know, I honestly think that deep slate bricks fit best in the nether. We can also do some other patterns as well, maybe deep slate tiles. I'm, I'm going to make a couple of these, maybe four, because I do have another idea in mind for how we could use those. I'm going to get rid of this crimson stem right here. It's kind of in the way. And those vines as well. We'll just kind of clean up this area as a whole. There we go. All right. So we can start by... Well, this is the middle. So we'll go with a three block wide hallway. I think that will be a nice size for the hub. At least for the smaller... Although what I'm thinking is if we were to have hallways beyond this, maybe this first one will be more like a central hallway. So maybe we go even wider on this, and then as we go down, we will have smaller three block wide hallways that kind of branch off a little bit. Okay, so Definitely the bricks on either side. And what I was kind of thinking is maybe we take our crimson planks and do those down the middle. You know, I'm kind of liking that so far. It has a nice nether vibe to it. Of course, I want to be mindful of resources, so any blocks that aren't going to be visible, I think I can just get rid of. And we'll use netherrack for that instead. Because we will have... These are the shorter hallways, believe it or not. We will probably have some that extend for thousands of blocks in certain directions. So we will want to make sure that we are preserving all of our resources as best we can. Oh wait, I just realized I wrecked the floor. What was I thinking? Dang it, I was thinking that the... Walls would go on top of that. I still had the three block wide hallway in the back of my mind. Okay, and then for the walls, it will be the bricks once again, like this. We'll move that stone cutter now. We'll just place that down. We'll put it right over here out of the way. All right, I'm kind of liking that design so far, and I think maybe... I think four blocks tall is a good height for that. And then it will just come back in this direction. And the walls will be for... Uh-oh, I need to make more bricks. The walls will be maybe for when... Well, no, that's not going to work. I was thinking we could have those be windows, but I forgot the walls are going to just connect to the sides of the bricks. So maybe what we do instead is iron bars and have the walls here in the middle and then iron bars on either side and then bricks like that. And maybe have those in three block sections. And then once again, walls and iron bars so we can have windows like that. Definitely helps break it up a little bit. But I'm also thinking we need a little more on the floor. It's kind of bland as it is right now. I will go ahead and finish up this wall, though, just so we can get a better sense of how this will all look once it's finished. 
All right, let me go grab some iron bars real quick. Okay, so I am curious as to what might happen if we were to take some lava, which... Is there any... Hello. Is there any around? There's some over there. I guess I could go grab that. There's got to be some closer lava, though. Okay, now I want to see what happens if we put lava right here. And I need a crafting table. And we are going to make a crimson trap door. Can I place that on top of the lava? That's unfortunate. But maybe... Maybe we can use these trap doors to our advantage. We place them sideways. We get that nice vertical stripe in there. What I'm thinking is a shroom light. So let me grab a shroom light. And we will place this in the block below it, like so. That gives us some nice ambient light. It helps break up the floor a little bit. And if we have those, well, for ease of building, I think it'll be best if we were to just line it up with those walls here in the middle. So if we did a shroom light there and a crimson trap door like that, and then one more right over here, I'm going to need another shroom light. And we did something like that. I think that is going to work for us. Let me put in the iron bars too. I'm going to be one short. So we'll go four right here and then two there, one there. I'm kind of liking this design. All right, so the last thing then would be the roof. For that, maybe some kind of arch. So let's get some stairs going, and let's go with something other than brick, because we used a lot of brick. Maybe polished deep slate. Hello. Oh, well... You'll be waiting for me when I go back through. All right, so I'm thinking maybe some polished deep slate slabs, and if we went stairs as well. Doing slabs for the roof will help us save on the quantity that we need, so that will be nice. And let's see. So upside down stairs here, and then slabs... What's the best way to do this? Move that nether wart block and just bring those down, I suppose. And then slabs like this. And stairs. Uh-oh. Upside down stairs once again on that side. How does that look? I'm kind of digging it. I really like that design. And, of course, sometimes there's always some great unintentional consequences that come with building. In our case, these slabs will prevent mob spawns. So, if we do have space above them, we won't have to worry about that. But I think this design is going to work for us. And... Oh, I forgot, when they come through into the overworld, they become zombified, so... We'll just let him roam free for now. But that is actually where I'm going to end the episode for today. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of the Optimistic Survival Series. If you did, definitely hit that thumbs up button. And be sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on daily content as soon as I publish it. Stay tuned for another episode on Thursday and tomorrow for the barn tutorial. Check the description for some more important information, links, how to contact me, all of that good stuff. And all that being said, comment, like, subscribe, remember to stay optimistic, and I'll see all of you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Bye.